Machine learning models can be broadly divided into discriminative or generative models. To understand the idea behind both these models, let's take a toy dataset of just four samples. One male aged more than 30 and one male aged less than 30 and two females aged more than 30. Let's say we fit a toy model to this data where the input X to the model is the gender and the output Y is the classification as to whether the person is less than or more than 30 years of age. Let's say we have trained a model with this data set. During prediction, whenever we get a female as input, the model will predict the age of the person is more than 30. To dive into the reason, let's have a look at our training data and convert the counts into probabilities. If I tell you the person is a male, there are only two males in the training data set. So the chance of getting the output to be less than 30 is one in two or one by two. Similarly, the chance of getting the output as greater than 30 is one by two. Simply because I have already told you the person is a male. Arguing in the same way, if I tell you the person is a female, as per our data set, there are two females and both of them are aged more than 30. And surprisingly, the probability of getting the output as more than 30 is one. What we have just computed is called the conditional probability distribution. This way of building models by conditioning is called discriminative modeling. Discriminative models learn sample by sample and so train by drawing a boundary line between different classes. It also means that discriminative models are almost always supervised models. Now let's look at the same data set from a different perspective. Let's consider all the four samples together and convert them into probabilities. There are a total of four samples with only one male aged more than 30 out of the four. And so the probability is one in four. Likewise, the probability of a male person aged less than 30 is one in four. There are two females out of four aged more than 30. So in terms of probabilities, it's one by two. Finally, there are no females aged less than 30 and so the probability is zero. This method of calculating the probabilities, considering all the samples jointly, leads to the joint distribution. And if a model learns this joint distribution, it's called a generative model. Unlike the discriminative models, the generative model jointly learns the probability of the entire data set without drawing any boundaries. And so, generative models are well suited for almost all unsupervised tasks. Imagine we are scaling up this toy problem hundreds of fold with our training data set containing thousands of examples of cats and dogs. With a generative model trained this way, we can pull out samples from the distribution learned by the model and we will end up with images at the output. If we pull out another sample from a different part of the distribution, we could end up with images of dogs. But note that we don't have any control over what the output image will be. Still, generative models built this way have a huge potential and state-of-the-art models such as StyleGAN and Flow are very good examples of models that are built this way. To understand how we can control the generated output, let's go back to our toy example with the joint distribution of the generative model P of X comma Y. If we know the labels Y of our training data, we can calculate the distribution of the labels P of Y. We can then simply divide the joint distribution by the distribution of the labels of y and we arrive at what is called the 
conditional probability distribution p of x given y. With this solution, we can input a label cat and ask the model to output x, which will be an image of a cat. Or we can input a label dog and get an image of a dog as the output. The solution gives birth to what is called the conditional generative models and is the fundamental building block of all the fancy generative models such as DALI that take text as input and generate an image at the output. This video is just a primer to a series of videos that are coming up about generative models and so I hope to see you in my next videos. Until then, bye!